here, what we're going to do is take some items that are commonly found underneath the hood of an automobile. We're going to destroy them one by one in our oven. I'm going to take a torch, place it upon the top of the item inside the oven through our access hole here, and at the point of destruction I will take my pyrometer here, remove the item from the oven, and measure the surface temperature. With a little bit of experience, an adjuster or special investigator should be able to see what items are normally consumed and what type of a fire that occurs under a hood. Also with a little bit of experience you should be able to determine which items will be, how shall we say, abused. Uh, the fire got a bit hot uh, to consume this kind of an item or it was prolonged type heat. Something like that, somewhere where the, uh, the arson red light goes off in your head and it's time to do a uh, more thorough investigation. Okay, without any uh, ado, Let's get going with our exercise. GPS type plastic. Uh, this is just an engine uh, vacuum valve of some kind. I'll put it in my oven here. Put it together. Put a lid on it. All right, let's have a quick look at what that item is burning in. seems to have stabilized right about 267 degrees on my pyrometer here. So this melts at a fairly low temperature. Fires that occur under a hood will occur at least a 6 800 degree range. As you can see, the destruction at 250 degrees is fairly reasonable for this type of a plastic. Under a fairly prolonged type of a fire, we should be able to see this item totally consumed. This would be a normal item to see burn. If it was a peripheral item, then yes, you'll normally see the progression along one side of it towards the other, and the other side of the plastic is virtually untouched. Next segment here, I have a piece of a brass radiator. Now this is a brass radiator, and normally brass will melt a couple hundred degrees higher than will its aluminum counterpart that's constructed of an aluminum core with an SMC outer shell. Normally the SMC outer shell will be consumed at approximately the same temperature as we saw the ABS type plastic consumed in. We're getting some nice destruction on that tank area. Let's pull it out. Do a quick measurement before we lose too much temperature. Okay, I'm going to running into a temperature of approximately 625 degrees right there at that area. This is a fairly thin radiator. Let's continue consuming it and we'll look at some of the heavier areas where the uh, header area joins the side bracket of the tank. And we'll put it back inside the oven now.
appears that the temperature stabilized out at about 720. So it takes a little bit more in the way of temperature to uh, destroy the area where the side tank, where the uh, header joins the, uh, the side uh, uh, reinforcement there. Again, we can see pretty, pretty fair amount of destruction at a fairly low temperature. You should be able to, under normal circumstances, see some type of destruction, but it'll be on a progressive basis. If you look at the, uh, the radiator, one end of it has been uh, subjected to pretty high, high temperatures. The rest of it was in the same oven area, but the scorching is fairly minimal. Okay, let's go to our next object, which is a master cylinder. out at about 850 degrees on that one. Okay, now we have uh, another shot here of our reservoir flaming away. Let's see what kind of a temperature we have here at our core. Okay, now at our core melting, I'm stabilizing out at about 504 degrees. That's a pretty healthy little burn temperature for that burn burn. is a common windshield wiper motor to uh, take it and place it in the oven and we're going to burn the winding portion of it. And get it to stay put long enough. We'll burn the winding portion of it. Okay, we'll do this in layers. First, we're going to do the surface casing. So we'll do the steel casing here. Which, to turn it red hot, was around 450 degrees. Okay, now let's consume it. appears to be about 670 degrees. Now when we uh, check the temperature of our burning plastic housing down here, we're going to see a maintenance of about 450 degrees. Okay, let's put it back inside the oven. And we'll go on to consuming the rest of the, the rest of the unit. Let's 
close to uh, 1100 degrees at that point, folks. You can see it just now started to consume the uh, uh, field windings of the uh, motor here. It's already consumed the uh, wiper pump and switch, uh, parking switch area. And you can see a uh, normal progression across the, uh, the wiper pump. Exercise. What we're going to do is we will heat up the exterior of the oven that we saw in our previous exercise. I'll heat it up to the approximate operating temperature found under the hood of modern engines exhaust manifolds. What I will do at that point is I will pour common items that are under a hood, namely automatic transmission fluid, engine oil, gasoline, and antifreeze, or coolant, onto the surface of the manifold. And then we will see if we can achieve spontaneous combustion. We will also, through this exercise, see which uh, articles are more combustible than the, the other ones. Okay, without any ado, let's get started. Yeah, I've heated up our quarter inch steel to just red hot. Now, normally a manifold will run just under what would be cherry red condition. And let's get a reading on the temperature here. We're just a little bit hot. About 1275 degrees in this application. Now I'll take, I'll have to stand off screen for this particular experiment, but I'm going to take a cap full of transmission fluid and I'm going to pour it on the manifold. See if we can induce spontaneous combustion. As you can see, we did spontaneously combust readily. All right. As you can see in this particular instance, if we threw a little bit of uh, transmission fluid on it, let's do it again. As you can see, it spontaneously combusts at an even lower temperature. Let's see at what a temperature it is right now. We'll take a second read on it. My manifold is down to around 675 degrees or so. So you can see transmission fluid is quite readily flammable. All you need to do is have some come out of the transmission or the cooler lines one way or the other and you will have a ready fire. In this next segment, we're going to repeat the exact same experiment except this time we're going to use engine oil. So I'm going to heat the oven up once more time and I'm going to get it to a cherry red condition and we'll do a couple of experiments as the item cools off. See if we can do some spontaneous combustion with engine oil. Got to heat it up again. Let's check our temperature. And we hit 1300 degrees with that one. Okay, so we're in the very hot zone. Now we'll take a little bit of engine oil. I'll have to move off camera for this one. And let's pour some engine oil on it. Again, you see absolutely no difficulty whatsoever catching fire. Let's let it cool down just a bit. And we'll take the temperature at a much slower pace. Let's see what we have now. Okay, fire temperature seems to have stabilized out at about 750 degrees right now. Again, we'll pour a little bit of engine oil on it. And as you see, the engine oil is not quite as flammable as the transmission fluid. Temperature right now at this point is... It's stabilizing at about 600 degrees right now, which is uh, actually a very, very normal operating temperature for an for a exhaust manifold. Also, one thing you do notice, though, around the area of the, the heating zone where we splashed the oil, you see quite a bit of flashing from the oil spattering down. That should be a normal item that you see whenever this type of a fire is alleged where either transmission fluid or engine oil has leaked down onto a hot manifold. 
you should see some traces of it having been burned off and flashed at, at, at the hot at the, uh, the burn zone. Okay, so we can see as the comparison between these two exercises, the transmission fluid will catch fire at a much lower temperature than will the engine oil. In our first experiment with the engine oil, up around around 1,250 degrees, 1,300 degrees, it caught fire readily. When we tried the same experiment down around 650 degrees, the engine oil failed to catch fire, even though it flashed and reached a uh, smoking vaporous state. However, the transmission oil very much caught fire at, at both stages of the experiment. So you can see that one is considerably a little more is considerably more flammable than the other. Measured before, we have approximately 12 to 1300 degrees when we get the manifold red hot. And here is a uh, mixture of pure coolant. Let's see if we can catch it on fire. No question about it. It is readily flammable, folks. That's a pure. Let's try with a 50-50 dilution mix. Well, at that temperature, obviously, it's not, not flammable. Let's cool it down just a hair, and we'll see if uh, we can catch our pure mixture at a uh, lower temperature. still up a little warm. It's about 900 degrees. Let's let it cool off for just a bit. We'll hit it at about six to 700 degrees. We'll uh, do an additional uh, test with it. The uh, alkalinity in our solution. Let's check our temperature one more time. Okay, that's a little closer. That's about 650 degrees. We'll try our experiment a second time with the pure solution of coolant. There again. We're unable to catch our mixture on fire at 650 degrees. However, readily it will catch fire between 12 and 1300 degrees. So obviously if our pure mixture won't catch fire, there's no sense in testing our 50-50 our mixture of coolant to water. As we can see in this exercise, the, the mixture, uh, or the solution of pure coolant catches fire readily at 1200 degrees. However, when we re reduce it down to the normal temperature of a, of a manifold, about 650-700 degrees, it does not catch fire. Let's try our experiment again using the 50-50 mix, and I will heat the manifold back up to 12-1300 degrees and we'll repeat our experiment. Okay, again we have our manifold back up into the 12-1300 degree range. It's uh, glowing cherry red. And I will try the experiment again with our 50-50 coolant mix. As you can see, uh, I don't know if we can catch that. It just barely flashed fire momentarily. It is burning as we speak, even though probably under these camera conditions it's invisible. Just barely caught fire at the 1200 degree range. Let's let it cool off just a bit and we will try it at cooler temperatures and see if we can get it to spontaneously combust. Okay, that's about 680 degrees, roughly about the te operating temperature of the normal manifold. As you can see, we we're unable to make it catch fire. So obviously now we, we can see that it will not catch fire at lower temperatures. What we've learned in our exercises so far is automatic transmission fluid is more flammable than engine oil and the higher the concentration of coolant to antifreeze, the greater propensity it is for combustion. We were unable to, to get it to combust at normal engine operating combustion temperatures when we're working with a 50 heat experiment, only this time we're going to 
use brake fluid to see if we can get the brake fluid to catch fire. Okay, take our sample of brake fluid. See if we can get it to catch fire. Uh, let's give it a moment or two to cool down just a bit and we'll try it again on a cooler manifold. Obviously it catches fire on a very hot manifold. We'll let it cool down just a bit. See in this segment, the brake fluid caught fire at both temperature ranges spontaneously. So we can presume that it, it is of itself a highly flammable agent. Okay, in the final segment here, what we're going to do is I'm going to measure the air temperature of a burning piece of carpet inside my uh, oven here. And before we set the carpet on fire, I'm going to soak it in a little bit of gasoline. So we'll take a little bit of gasoline and we're going to soak my carpet in. Soak it real good on both sides. Okay, we'll place the carpeting in the oven. Now we'll withdraw our carpeting. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Largely, I just put that piece of carpeting in an oven at 1200 degrees, and it's only very lightly burned. It's singed a little bit here at the top. see that. However, the vast majority of it is still unconsumed. As you can see, we just measured the, the air temperature inside my oven with a gasoline fire on top of some carpeting to be approximately 1200 degrees. But the carpeting itself is largely unconsumed. You can see a little bit of burning right in this area, a little bit of consumption here, but the vast majority of it is only singed. Whenever you're looking at an arson fire, Normally, you will see quite a bit of consumption on the carpeting. In a normal fire, the carpeting will, will show radiant type heat, not the actual consumption like what we're looking at. As a general rule, when you see carpeting completely destroyed in a vehicle, that's an excellent sign that arson has occurred or some kind of accelerant was present in the fire. Normally, fire will burn up and you will see the radiant heat downwards onto the carpet but you will not see actual consumption of the carpet except where maybe some plastics have dripped down and you'll see isolated consumption. If you see total consumption of the carpet, excellent chance that somebody poured it. In this example, what we're going to do here is we're going to burn this example of an automotive loom. I have a piece of an actual automotive harness here. I have a battery which is off camera and I have it connected in a dead short running through the wire in the loom. I have one wire here that's the same wire as the one here connected to it. Vice here, this is a load tester for a battery and what it will do is through the leads here, when I turn this knob, I will slowly begin inducing a direct short into our wiring loom. As I, as I turn this knob up, that increases the load, moves it from its resistive state into a loaded state and think in terms of the wiring loom being much like the filament of a light bulb. That's what we're going to attempt to do is burn it end to end. 
and I have attached a piece of carpeting in the middle of the loom to simulate this, this loom actually running through an automobile. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the knob on the load tester and that will induce a dead short into my loom. The loom underneath the piece of ordinary automotive carpeting to simulate this loom actually being in an automobile underneath the carpet so you can see what it'll look like when it burns outside the loom and, all, or, and also underneath the carpeting. Okay, so what this device is going to do here, we can read the actual voltage in the circuit here. It's currently reading just a little bit over 12 volts. And as I turn the knob here, then this needle up here will show how many amps are flowing through our circuit in a dead short. Alright, let's move it up here and we'll begin to shorten our cable, see if we can achieve consumption. Alright, I'm at 25 amps right here. The wire seems to be handling it admirably at this point. up to 80 amps. I'll have to switch to the next higher scale. Okay, so I'm at 80 amps. But still, we have no burning. Now I have 200 amps going into this circuit. Look at this, folks. We're starting to see some burning over here. The wiring loom is smoking. It's smoking throughout the entire length of the loom, and it is now burning over to a negative end. Okay, burning our loom, it's coming up through the carpeting, insulation is falling off of it, we're still maintaining about 175 amps current through, yet we have no ignition. This is the true nature of an electrical fire that you're looking at. It will smoke, it will burn the insulation off, it will run the battery dead, but it typically is not going to ignite unless it's allowed to continue this and somehow it's made of materials which will allow the burning. You can see that it's now melting itself all the way through the carpeting. The battery is still maintaining a good 170 amps. We still have no ignition. As you can see, this is the true nature of an electrical fire. Finally, at the last portion of our, our burn, we are still now just barely getting ignition through the carpeting down to here. We have the ignition over here, and we have or I should say insulation melting over here, we have insulation melting over here and we're just now barely working our way through the carpeting. Now, that exercise was conducted with a brand spanking new battery which was fully charged. I ran the battery completely dead and I was unable to achieve ignition with a current modern loom with automotive type wiring running underneath a carpeting which is of standard automotive design. It simply is very very difficult for one of these types of fires to cause ignition on modern types of, of upholstery, plastics, carpeting, insulation on the wire. Our battery has now run dead and let's assess the damage that occurred. The insulation is burned off of our positive end here. This, this particular one goes directly to the positive of the battery. It burned all the insulation off. It burned through the trace in the taped up section. I do not have, from here to here, I do not have melted carpeting. Yet from here over through in here, I have melted carpeting. It started to burn the trace through here, here, and here. Although you can't see it very well, it has burned the insulation off of this end, but not quite as badly as this end. So you'll see, you can see, this is the true nature of a damage path of, a, of an electrical fire made with a DC battery. Okay, as we can see in this previous exercise, we were able to melt the loom. We successfully melted all of the insulation off of the wire here. We've melted the carpeting down onto the loom, but yet we were unable to achieve complete ignition. Okay, as we can see from this exercise, we burned the insulation off completely off of the 
positive side of the wire. We've melted it inside the, the loom up to here. From this point to this point, we do not have melted carpeting, but from here to here we do. We've melted the insulation and the tape here all the way over to this end, although this end is not quite as melted as this end. We'll pull the carpeting up now and we'll see what it looks like underneath. Okay, let me hold the board up just a little bit. Okay, you can see the board became burned. Yet, with a brand new battery, we were unable to achieve ignition running that battery dead with a complete short end to end. We we're able to scorch it, but we weren't able to achieve ignition on our carpeting. And obviously, we got it quite hot, it was hard enough to burn our wood here.